Welcome to you the 16th day of August, Sunday. We're glad you're here with us to celebrate morning prayer, and we will be using the lessons assigned for this day. The liturgical team this morning, Naya, Brian, Kathleen, and Matt, and Don McCullough. Don McCullough will make musical offerings. We're glad you're with us. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Are you okay? A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servant, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Thus says the Lord, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Here ends the reading. A reading from the 67th Psalm. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. And for you, judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Here ends the reading. A reading from Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as we once 
disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the reading. Matthew calls this woman the Canaanite woman. Mark calls her the Syrophoenician woman. But no matter what the location designation, it is clear that this woman was a pagan, an outsider, untouchable. She had no power, no authority. I'm reminded of a song I used to like to listen to in the 80s by Janis Joplin, Bobby McGee. And Joplin sang, freedom is just another word for nothing else to lose. But for this woman, she did have something else to lose, her daughter. And so she is persistent. The disciples seem irritated embarrassed maybe, and encouraged Jesus to send this woman away, this woman that has called him Lord, son of David, seeking his help. Jesus has drawn a line. She is on one side of it, and they are on the other. But this brassy woman with nothing to lose persistently carries on after Jesus tells her that it is not fair for the food, the children's food, to go to the dogs. It's meant for the lost sheep of Israel. And the woman's retort seems to change Jesus's mind. 
And she says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs of the table. At that moment, it seems as though Jesus steps over that line or he rubs it out. He is no longer the Messiah for only the lost sheep of Israel, but for God's chosen people for everyone. And he stretches out his arms to her and he continues to open his arms wider and wider. This week, I've been thinking about how we seem to be in the midst of drawing lines between us and them. And this is not anything new. We have done this too much in history. I think about all the Africans, the adults and the children that were brought here, enslaved against their will. I think about how in World War II, we interred loyal Japanese in camp. I think about how in the 19th century, there were all kinds of signs that went up that said, Irish need not apply to Irish immigrants, or the assumption that all Italian Americans are part of the mafia, or that Germans are kraut heads, or for that matter, that all farmers are rednecks. In this passage, I think Jesus invites us to look at the lines that we have drawn between us and them and to engage in conversation, to step over those lines. With Jesus as our leader, we are invited indeed to step over those lines, not because we have to or we must or we ought to, but because we can. Who knows, on the other side of that line, we might just encounter Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will now read the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive, thankfully, the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, John Howard, Charles Kaiser, and Dorsey Henderson, our bishops, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. 
God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, hear our prayers for the earth. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighbors and workplaces, for Don, Elaine, Jamie, Michael, Maureen, Joe, and Paul, who are celebrating a birthday this week, and Margo and Brad, who are celebrating an anniversary this week, that they may grow in wisdom and grace. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, especially Jim, Bart, Susan, Jackie, Mike, Michael, Cynthia, Stan, Shannon, Glenn, Ruth, Constantine, Carl, Sarah, Pat, Joyce, Sven, Gail, Art, Patricia, E.G., Judy, Dorothy, Ellen, Shirley, Gunner, and Betsy. For those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those, who facing, those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all who are in need. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, especially Elise, Susan, Drusilla, Congressman John Lewis, George Floyd, Brianna Taylor, Tamir Rice, Rayshard Brooks, Ahmaud Arbery, Trayvon Martin, and countless others. For the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints, make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of saints in light. God of grace, hear our prayers for those who have died. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth that barriers would crumble and division cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of this broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love that the whole earth and all its people may indeed live in peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. 
wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God for this. Thanks be to God. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope that by now you have received the exciting news that comes from the prayerful discernment and holy listening of the search committee and the work of the vestry from the senior warden about the call of a new rector. And we encourage you to stay tuned to our Good Shepherd YouTube channel for an introductory hello of that new rector. We carry on faithfully immediately after the service we will have fellowship time at 11, and then I said at noon, stay tuned for that special YouTube video. On Tuesdays, we have Centering Prayer at noon. On Wednesdays, our Good Shepherd Book Club continues, and we are reading this very engaging, delightful, helpful book, The Ways of White Folks by Langston Hughes. And then following our book club, we have Compline that is on YouTube as well. Sunday mornings, we have Bible study, uh, gospel conversation and coffee. And then we have begun through the fine work of Susanna Sands, Zoom on um, Zoom Sunday School, which is a fun thing to be a part of. Um, so blessings to you all. Again, thanks for joining us. The peace of the Lord be always with you.